Diversity. It is a word that quite simply means the absence of whitey. <laughs> Back in the day, I feel like we had another word for including and or excluding people based on their skin color, but oh well, those were the good old days when we considered racial discrimination to be a bad thing. How far we have come. As Dungeons and Dragons Next Anthology is written entirely by black and brown authors, and this is a positive thing, a very diverse thing, I'm sure, as the idea for all of this came from Ajit George, who just couldn't shake the idea of a whole book written by black and brown authors. Uh, coincidentally, entirely, coinky dinky winky, um, Ajit George is an Indian himself, and the fact that this was a way to guarantee himself more work, <laughs> of course, never crossed his mind. Obviously, natürlich, of, of course not. Why would you ever think such a silly thing? No, 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 no. It was simply that whilst he was working on Ravenloft, ah uh, yes, a very black and brown inspired setting. See, I shouldn't laugh because... Apparently, they made a re-released version of uh, von Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. Um, now, Ravenloft, in case you're unaware, is a very old and very, very good adventure model. It has a fantastic world and a really cool main villain. But in the modern world, it being a critically acclaimed source book. That tells me all I need to know. The critics loved it, everyone else bloody hated it. I imagine it will have a significant number of black and brown vampires and werewolves. I mean, it is modern day D&D, of course. I don't even want to know what they did to Ravenloft. I refuse to acknowledge that there is an updated version of Ravenloft, but anyways... In the desperate desire to guarantee more work, uh, I'm sorry, in the need to see more diverse stories, of course, Ajit George decided to try and make a book written entirely by people with the correct skin colour. And this was the, um... What was it again? The, the Radiant Citadel. Ah yes, a very memorable name, absolutely. So what is the Radiant Citadel? Well, it is uh, one very large rock surrounded by many other rocks who happen to be portals to the multiverse. So, a hub world. <laughs> okay, a very novel concept, absolutely. <laughs> See? Right, here's the thing, okay? I am actually growing more and more fond of the idea of exploring more in the way of stuff like African mythology, perhaps Indian mythology as well could be very interesting, Chinese mythology, Asian mythology, stuff like this. And by and large, this will probably have to be done by a actual native, somebody who is steeped in that kind of lore, has a genuine interest for it, and most importantly of all, has a driving interest in creating that universe, building it, making it, modernizing it, adapting it, and bringing it to the modern audience, shall we say, be it in the form of a, of a book, or an adventure, or a movie, TV show, a setting, a universe, whatever. Essentially doing what uh, Tolkien did for British mythology, coming up with a British mythology based upon many other little things that he all brings together and constructs out of it. However, what this is, is not that. Apparently the greatest form of inspiration from anything is that there is a giant dead creature surrounding the magical rock at the center where the locals have carved their living out of the creature's bones, which was inspired by Indian rock-cut architecture. Now that's a cool idea, but carving your civilization into the bones of a dead creature is not particularly novel, and using it simply as a hub world through which to connect other worlds, um, 12 of which is apparently up to the GM himself to make up. Uh, right, now see, if there was some conflict involved in it, okay, maybe you got me there, right, okay. Let's take the, the, the idea of, uh, of different worlds of gods, right? You've got the African mythology, you've got Norse mythology, you've got Indian mythology, and they're all inexplicably linked to this central, or the, what do they call it, the royal diamond or something, right? 
and they all now have to interact with one another. They have to. Uh, like tying up heaven and hell, the constant conflict between good and evil, stuff like that. That could be quite a lot of interesting stuff. However, um, unlike other cities from modern D&D lore, the, the Raiden Citadel isn't overrun by crime lord demons or mind flayers or any kind of you know action or intrigue or interesting. Rather, it's a place where people can live together in peace. So it is literally just a hub where your PCs can go and buy stuff and go, wow, look at this, isn't this fanciful? Now, could we get on to the actual adventuring part, please, in the multiverse? Is not a place of backstabbing and lurking monsters and crime just around the corner. The Radiant Citadel was meant to give players a real hope, a respite, a place to regroup and rebuild after facing the worst and most tragic challenges. Literally, a quest hub. <laughs> like, it's just like, okay, well, you've been into the MMO shooter game now. Now you're gonna pop out into the lobby. Nothing can happen to you here. You're not gonna get robbed. You're not gonna get backstabbed. There's no monsters. There's no quest. It's just a shopping center. Right. See, this isn't quite what I imagined when I was championing the idea of different mythologies and worlds and instances and legends being brought into the modern day. A shopping center wasn't wasn't quite that, but uh, alrighty then. And um, is this is this the best your diverse team can come up with again? Isn't it? What I would really like to see is instead of simply going, this book was written by skin color. This book was inspired by myth, was inspired by this and this legend, was inspired by this and this pantheon. This is such a blatant race attempt that even Polygon's comment section is starting to go like, does it make a difference, like, the skin color of the people who made it? I know people who care who produced it rather than the product is going to be good or uh, bad. Sorry, development. I don't know. Usually I just care about the product. Of course not. Representation of a historic underrepresented group matters. It matters only because society is, ob is obsessed with race now. When the average commenter on a Polygon article is starting to have that woke moment where they go, hold on, are we the racists? <laughs> Things are getting rather interesting. And there's the thing there, right. Let's look at these two covers, because they're rather interesting. This is the, the more classical cover. It's it's just a D&D cover. Like, you've got a fanciful retard creature. It's it's peaceful. It's bullshitty. It's dropping pears or tomatoes or... I don't even know what the hell this is. Giant strawberries down some multicultural characters. You've got a little hoy... Like, it's literally a quest hub. It is literally the shopping mall. <laughs> We've got fish merchant, ocean stall, a fruit vendor pointing ang angrily at the weird bat thing. <sighs> Bland and banal is the word that comes to mind. Forced whimsicality is the term I would use. Now look at the second one. This is a bit more interesting. Right here you've got a little bit of that mythos inspiration. All right, so we got... The hub world there, right, it's a shard. It's a shard formed kind of like a dagger, like a wound almost. It's surrounded by all these kinds of like surreal things. You've got a, like a bear thing over here, maybe. You've got it up in opposition to an eagle. You've got a jaguar kind of thing down here. This is way more interesting again. This is way more what I would like to see. The hub world isn't the main focus because the hub world should never be the main focus. Rather, all of the different things in conflict surrounding the hub world should be the focus. Their influence upon the hub, their effects on it, their motives with it, their attempts to use it, control it, destroy it, harness it, use it to invade their neighbors, use it to prevent their neighbors from invading them, etc., etc. There you've got conflict. There you've got political intrigue. There you've got, well, an adventure rather than a peaceful place where everyone can live happily together for the convenience of the PC party. <laughs> it's stupid, is what it is. And now, hey, 
Maybe it's really good. Maybe it's an incredibly in-depth world. Maybe it has ass loads of world building. Maybe the, what was it, three, three shards or something that they did actually build? Yeah, 15, 12 are missing. Maybe the three shards are actually that. Maybe there are different universes with all of this conflict, all of this intrigue, all of these interesting storylines. But there doesn't seem to be anything that suggests that. And since the entire article is based primarily on how amazing it is to have skin color do skin color things, because skin color, I'm not particularly um, convinced that that's going to be the case, frankly. Though it is nice to see, again, finally, we've known this for a long time, that diversity no longer means what the word is intended to mean, rather that it has become a political term, a buzzword used to mean we want more people of the correct skin color and less of the people who were born wrong to do the thing. And we are going to give them money and power and prestige to do that thing, because we are enormous racists, as it turns out. But again, it's always nice to have the actual evidence presented to you, isn't it? The goddamn up what? Like, see here, that's another thing too, right? The Indian rock carving thing, you could do interesting stuff like that too. What if the hub world is forever changing? One day it's a peaceful place, the next time you arrive it's all downtrodden, it's all chiseled away, it's all destroyed, suddenly it's that, it is that crime place, it is that horror place. The next time it's a forest, it's overgrown, it's a jungle. You can see the shop but nobody's there, it's abandoned. It seems to have been abandoned for a hundred years. The next time again, it's a bustling society but taken over by a completely new faction. Like everything twists and turns and grows out of the natural. It grows and changes. Instead of having the solid faced uh, rock, you can instead have the temple of the architecture of the rock carvings. You know, something, a play on the idea of the permanent, the mountain via the, the more um, natural, like humanity's effect upon the environment, the evolution of a civilization perhaps, but I'm giving them ideas that I would like for them to use. Mm. Anywho, until next time, I've been Arch, thank you all very much for watching, and I have to see you all again soon. Till then, have a good day.